What's up everybody, Michael Silva here. We have ourselves a little hidden clue that could be an indicator for a stock market turning point. Hard to believe being that we've seen the NASDAQ close lower for the seventh straight day. The bears are feeling confident and they are partying like crazy. Yes, they're building a lot of wealth in a very short period of time. So much wealth, you can call them Jefflon Zuckergates. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. My name is Michael. If you're new here, well, welcome to the channel. Consider subscribing if you like these type of analysis videos and hit that thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Let's get into today's show. All right, everybody, welcome back. So what clue am I talking about? Well, it was the same clue that tipped us off for the top in the bear market rally. What am I talking about? I'm showing a chart that I posted August 15th. I also made a video about it. August 15th, I'm showing the HYG, which is high yield. That is the smart money versus the SPY, the dumb money. So you got smart money and dumb money. We talked a little bit about it yesterday, but this is the clue that's taking place. And I got to show you if you haven't seen it before, it tipped us off last time before seeing a 10% decline in the S&P 500. I'm talking about these divergences. So HYG, the smarter money put in a lower high while the dumb money put in a higher high. So the smart money was getting, you know, it wasn't it wasn't quite acknowledging that the SPY was pushing forward further. And this could be an indication, a negative divergence that we could be seeing a top. We saw the same thing back here. And this is the same thing that actually talked, uh, to, uh, showed us the bottom too as well um, in mid-June. All right, so what does it look like now? Let me show you. So first and foremost, that red box that we just saw, this is what happened to the SPY right then after, boom, to the downside, okay? So is this drop over? Well, we've seen a 10% drop. We've seen seven straight days to the downside. Yes, we know things are getting overextended. Could this be a potential turning point? And the reason why I'm saying that now is because we did get that lower low in the SPY, which we discussed yesterday. It was a wick. It wasn't a candle close, but it did create a lower low here while the HYG is still holding up at this particular point in time, putting in a higher low. So this is a divergent similar to right here, similar to right here, similar to right here, okay? And we saw positive things take place shortly thereafter. Now, HYG is overall in a downtrend. SPY is overall in a downtrend. So what would I like to see? Well, I like to see the, S, uh, the HYG try to take up 75 while this still holds down because that would be even more of an indication but say if this just holds around tomorrow maybe gets a little bit lower but we start to see hyg maybe on an intraday time frame start to pick up and move up further that would be an indication to me that the spike could follow shortly thereafter so that's something that i'm paying attention to the divergence it's building it doesn't mean it's up for for certain but it is important to watch because we've seen it play out multiple times previously and we talked about it obviously before the big move took place now i also want to pair that with the bpspx chart because i want to reiterate people's kind of thought process during these peak times so i want and i can see it from a higher level because i see a lot of comments and so forth so let's take you back to the middle of june the middle of the june was the the june is when the s p 500 hit its low point right here and marked um, a potential bottom if you go back and look at the videos we talked about this right here the sbp spx was getting overextended to the downside and we discussed that this is not the place where you want to put on shorts Potentially, you can look to go long as the chart is getting overextended, but you need to be tactical, okay? So what happened to the SPY in the middle of the June? Why do I keep saying the June? I don't know. In the middle of the June, well, we know right here, it, uh, HY, sorry, SPY right here was finding itself hammering out a bottom before seeing that big rip. So that paired nicely with also the divergences that we saw too as well when we were doing the videos back then. Then we started running up right? And what did we run up to? Well, look at the BP chart here. We kept on crunching higher and higher and it stayed overextended for quite some time. That's completely normal. But then we started calling out the negative divergence that was forming from the up upside. So we paired this negative divergence with another divergence here in bond. So we not only have overextended charts from a BP perspective, perspective with a bullish percent index, but we also have high yield telling us something too as well. Why am I telling you this? Because we're still in that 
overextended territory here too as well. The BP chart is reading at 49.6, uh, 49 which is a decent reading. It's not really overextended from that perspective, but from the RSI perspective, 28.85 is getting into that overextended territory. And I can tell you this, the BP chart of uh, the COMPQ, so the NASDAQ composite, that's overextended to the downside now. Um, I'm not gonna show all those charts, but also the NASDAQ 100, consumer discretionary, technology, financials is coming off a hot and fast too. Um, and, and you know, the, those are all, all except for obviously the one that I just previously mentioned are overextended, but financials are pointing straight down too as well. How did the stock market perform today? Well, not all too fabulous, right? We finished red um, for the most part, relatively flat. There was just a crud ton of volatility. As far as the 11 sectors go, some more defensive posturing, seeing, seeing utilities up there in the lead. But overall, it was kind of a mixed bag uh, to, be, to be quite frank. Now, if we look at like the one minute chart of the SPY, this is just complete and utter volatility. It's very hard to find trades here unless if you know how to be very tactical. Okay, so we sold off basically right out of the gate, right? A small gap up this morning, sold right into. That's like day two now of just getting gapped up and then trapped to move down. Um, so we gapped down and then we completely recovered, bringing in a lot of FOMO. But what I noticed during this time that I want you to pay attention to to as well, going into tomorrow, um, when I was looking at, I was looking at bonds. So I was technically looking at like ZB um, on TOS or you can look at TLT. Well, bonds were not mimicking this move at all. They moved up a little bit, but they definitely didn't. They, they just held basically steady and flat all day. And I'll show you those charts momentarily. But that was kind of an indication saying that this rally could easily get faded. Over here, it looked like we can get the pop, right? We talked about that in the Patreon group if you're there. We'll talk about that later, uh, but then yeah, bonds just bonds were just very very heavy. So there was some big things that did take place today. If you weren't paying attention, we'll go over those now. The first and foremost is the ten-year yield was up 4.6 percent. It closed at 3.34 percent, and this does look like it can keep continuing to go higher to potentially test this high right here. So we'll continue to monitor that and see what happens. The RSI is getting into that overextended territory there too as well. But this thing just continues to just kind of just truck, you know, just grind higher. Another big one was the dollar. The dollar kept on continuing to move higher, and we know what happens to other assets when the dollar keeps on hitting higher and higher. It puts pressure on equities. It puts pressure on commodities. It puts pressure from a global perspective. Okay, if we take a look at the TLT, um, the TLT, right? So 10-year yield was up, bonds, they go down. And you can see here, just a massive hit to the downside. So minus 2.48%, it's coming down into this lower area here. It actually took that low out. Um, interestingly enough, if you look at expected moves for the week, we we bounced from the expected move intraday, and then we came right back down, closing outside of it. So we are right there on day one at the lower end of that expected move. So perhaps we can get a potential bounce. Now, the only bearish thing here, right, is obviously the volume, the gap down, and we took out that low. So it's, once again, you know, hard to read this environment, right? This is not a flight to safety, at least of now. It looks like the dollar is the flight to the safety. So it's a very difficult environment to navigate. We talked about Bitcoin yesterday looking like, you know, some some pirate was, you know, being pushed off of a plank into the ocean. And you can see here, well, um, yep, that's exactly what took place. So we'll see here if it can recover and recover quick. But that was a big hit to the downside today, down four and a half percent on Bitcoin. Ethereum was only down around three percent. It's still wedging. Just a bunch of wedgies over here, right? Rising wedge, breakdown, rising wedge, breakdown, rising wedge. Are we going to get a breakdown? I don't know. But as it stands right now, we saw a nice little pop to the upside, still below those key moving averages. And it is, right? Expansion, contraction. Is the expansion going to be to the upside or the downside? Just watch for the break of that specific pattern, okay? This is all in the back of a sailor to shift ratio that is below zero and pointing down. So is this the greatest time to just enter in blindly and say, yep, this is a great place to buy the dip? N not in my opinion, no. But you can also get very lucky, right? So when we see big rips, I know there's some Ethereum news coming out. I'm not, you know, no pro by any means in the crypto space, but that could be a catalyst for a potential reversal. Um, how I look at it is I look at it from a technical perspective and I look at this indicator when it gave me the sell signal, I had to get the low below that. So I got out of my last previous buy signal, which was ended up being relatively flat and it saved me from this current dip that we're currently in. But that's the same thing that took place over here boom, to the downside where we saw stuff like micro strategy down about, it was like 70% down on this Bitcoin sell signal.
signal. And right now we're seeing a sell signal here too as well. And we just haven't seen, we saw a little bit of momentum to the upside, but we got a, we got a while to go to see this four week rate of change, get back above that zero marker, okay? Uh, if we continue on, we already looked at that chart. Let's look at the SPY on the daily time frame. The daily time frame it was down 0.38%, so pretty minimal, right? We gapped up and we went lower. Um, the only bullish thing here that I can really call out is that we closed above the prior two trading days lows. You know, like call it what it is. We we closed below the closing points, obviously, so it's down. But at least we recouped that level and we stayed above that 390 level, which the 390 level is like a big magnet right here because you can see 390 is holding. It held. It acted as resistance over here, right? Um, and then over here, there's a lot of price action throughout this area too as well. So 390 is just a key area. And once we break off of that level decisively, we can start moving in another direction. Um, and it's it's really anybody's game right now. Like, like I said, we, we have an extended to the downside we're potentially seeing the um the divergence is building in hyg so a move higher is more than plausible over here too as well okay distribution days continue to build up so it's it's just a tactical environment that we need to be a part of uh, if we take a look at the spy some more divergences that are building right price actions doodling down below a declining five-day moving average so what does that mean it means you know it's 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 bearish until proven innocent, I guess, right? We need to see this to flatten out. We need to see price above it and start moving higher. That's when we can get more bullish, at least more confident in being bullish. Right now, you're just taking guesses, you know, and trying to play some pops to the upside, which is totally fine from a tactical perspective. But just understand that, you know, if you want wind at your back in these trades, this needs to be up from a bullish perspective. As it stands right now, it's bearish couple bullish things that are taking place is price actions going down but momentum oscillators are pointing up so this shows me that the the momentum to the downside is weakening and you can see that in the indicators picking up some strength we are still below zero but if this starts moving back up through zero you know that could be uh, a sign that we might start to see this level out something like that and potentially start curling up there too as well all right, uh, same thing goes for the Qs. We'll go into that. Qs, right, we closed pretty much at the matching low of the, I think this was Thursday of last week. Um, so yeah, down almost a percentage point, All right, A big thing that held the, the SPY down, which I'm surprised, it, or the Qs down, was the yields, which I'm surprised that with the yield move like that, the Qs didn't actually get hit harder. So that was impressive. And this is also right at a key area, right? And just right here, it's at a previous little matching low right around there. And then you can see prior areas of resistance, right? And then a bunch of other price action that traded within these areas. So yeah, it's acting like a magnet. We're just trading within really this range here. And that center point is just, just a massive magnet. So we got to see if we can start breaking price, breaking away from that to get a decisive decision of where to go. The 15 minute time frame on the uh, with the five day moving average prices below it, it looks just like the SPY at this point. You can see the momentum oscillator also picking some traction up. So price is selling off, but momentum is telling us, hey, the sellers could be weakening here at this given time until that changes, right? We'll let you know. But as it stands right now, it does show us that the momentum to the downside is waning. And you also saw the RSI too as well, picking up a little bit of strength here too. Below that five-day moving average, so we need to see this start to obviously go neutral to more bullish to feel a little bit more confident. If you take a look at the IWM, this was down 1% today. So this one got hit harder than all of them. I'm um, closing below the prior two trading days lows, and it's now coming into what 177.50, and that matches up with this prior area of resistance, this prior area of resistance, and then also where all this trading activity took place. I do notice a couple of volume shelves over here, right? We broke from that coming down. There's not really much volume trade in this area up until this point. You can see more volume, more volume, more volume. So it could very well act as a potential level of support in this region over here. So IWM has been getting hit, you know, it was a strong run, got hit hard, right? Jackson Hole was right here, followed through to the downside. Perhaps we're coming down to test these levels. Uh, and then we could potentially see a bounce with the small caps. And the same thing also that goes with small caps on the 65, sorry, the 15 minute time frame. I keep saying 65, 15 minute time frame with the 130 period moving average, which ends up being the five day moving average. It is declining. But I will point out once again, positive divergences that are building on the RSI and this 
uh, price momentum oscillator over here too as well. Last but not least, let's talk about the zones. A couple interesting things taking place on the zones. This is something that I share on my Patreon group. It's $9 a month or just do it annually. Saves you um, a few bucks a month and it ends up, it's like 90 bucks for the entire year. This is where I post my trade ideas, my watch list, weekly expected moves for about 40 products. And yes, also the zones. Then you also have the community stuff there too as well. Um, the zones here, you know, I use this as kind of a risk management tool. Um, I'm still working on it, so it doesn't actually count as one of the benefits down here until, you know, I can really kind of hone in on it. But it has been pretty helpful when we added this midpoint. The midpoint can act as like a transitionary, like, a, like a, a change in trend for the most part. And I'll show you an example here momentarily. But what I'm seeing here is S&P 500 will use the SPX. I'll go over a little bit of it. We're looking at 7.23% upside to 2.9% downside within the zone. So the downside is getting minimized while the upside is getting you know, stronger. And if I look at the midpoint, it's at about 4,000, we're gonna call it. And then the closing price was 3,908. So you know, if the midpoint is gonna hold as a level of resistance as we trend down, I would start to look at the S&P 500 as it's getting overextended to potentially go test out that 4,000 area could be a possibility. Look at, look at VIX, right? We closed at, 26.91% uh, and it's looking from a percentage basis pretty large downside to upside it's about a one to two right around there just a slightly slightly different um, another big one that i like to look at is the the dollar the dxy the midpoint is 109.15 right now it closed at 110 okay so we're just slightly above it right as it stands um, the upside is getting minimized meaning we're about at the high point and then the downside is obviously to the lower range which is about 107 on this current breakdown now um, just to give you an example of what I meant by the midpoint, I'll show you the DXY, and I, you know, I had to put this track it. But the DX, this, this is the, you know, the high right here. This is the low of the band, and then you have the midpoint right here, which is kind of going through the center. This right here is the dollar, the DXY, and we know that the dollar was kind of flagging at this point. It was chopping around the midpoint, but when we actually had a decisive break from the midpoint it held up it came back and back tested it back tested it, and it's just continued to hold that to the upside which has been quite nice so if we start getting a break below the midpoint at some point i'll obviously bring it up but if we do get a midpoint that could potentially start a trend where the dollar comes off and that what that can mean for other risk assets such as you know the s p 500 potentially gold various commodities whatever the case may be it could be quite bullish for a shorter term period that's all i got for you on today's episode everybody enjoy your night